next item here would be the minutes of our meeting of February 23rd. Uh, we'll accept the motion to accept the minutes as presented, moved by Councillor Tessier, seconded by Councillor Aker. Are there errors or omissions from the minutes of February 23rd? Errors or omissions only? <coughs> Going once. Going twice. We'll call it. All those in favor? And contrary minded, motion accepted. Uh, business arising, minutes of February 23rd. Anybody? Councillor Lane. Uh, 141. Um, I raised an issue at our last meeting relating to the, uh, that ramp coming off the outer ring road mm -hmm. heading into Mount Pearl. Uh, the right. dangerous intersection. Right. And I understand from the uh, action report that there was a letter written. I'm just wondering, have we received any response to that letter? <coughs> any response? Okay. Uh, no, the letter was Mr. sent out to Pearl yesterday. So the letter's just been sent out. Oh, the letter's oh, only okay. just now gone. Yes. Okay. All right. It'll be a week, I'm sure, if not a month. So I guess that'll come back through Public Works Committee and through the council that way, Willis? Uh, I would imagine so, yes. Yeah, yes. that's correct. Yeah, okay. yeah, perfect. Other business arising? Yes, you're Deputy Mayor. Uh, number 135 there. Yep. Yep. The notice of motion for the amendment of the Mount Pearl Development Regulations. We've, we've received a number of phone calls and uh, emails regarding this. Did so, we ever? So just, just for clarification here, because again, I've spoken with several people and we've had some email correspondences here that there is. There's a meeting scheduled for March the 23rd, uh, mm -hmm. 2010, a uh, public information session. And essentially, we've had a request from Newfoundland and Labrador Housing to alter one unit as a pilot project from a two apartment uh, structure to three apartments. So that was the request that came before Council. <coughs> Under the existing um, development or zoning regulations, we could not accommodate that request. Correct. So the only way that we could accommodate that, and again, it was just it was just a pilot project, in order to accommodate that uh, in the in the context of affordable housing in, in the city, um, we said, okay, the only way we could accommodate that was to amend the um, zoning regulation, and this is what we have here before us. Um, we couldn't accommodate the request on the existing zoning regulations because some of the units don't even meet the existing zoning regulations. So we are suggesting that to accommodate this request we would have to amend it to a residential high density special. <coughs> so this is, what, this is what we're proposing. And um, as a result of that, we are having a public briefing session whereby the public are welcome to come out, uh, written commentary, verbal commentary, and then as a result of that, that public briefing session, we will take the technical information uh, that we receive, as well as the commentary from the residents in the area, and then council will take that and use that in their in their final decision. Mm -hmm. There's no decision being made yet. There's concern that, you know, all of the 22 or 24 units on Spruce Avenue were going to be converted, and that we were going to have 150, you know, multiple units in the area. That wasn't the intent or the spirit of this. No, it's not the case at all. Right. So I just wanted to put that point out there for clarification, and uh, and again, that is the purpose of the briefing of the briefing session. Also, um, in addition to just dealing with this one unit. Council is also sort of looking long term from an um, affordable housing perspective where um, we would have discretion that we may use discretion for future um, uh, developments or units. So for example, uh, as, as was sent out to the people in the area and in the newspaper, you know, the possibility of um, these apartment building definitions and the like. And again, if, if this was the case and this amendment were to go through, there would be discretion there if <coughs> anything were to be proposed to council outside, you know, a two apartment being converted to a three apartment, it would be the council's discretion as well. So that we would, and again, because of that discretion, we would go back to the public so they would always have a chance to participate and provide input. But for clarification, there's been no decision made on this. It was for one pilot project that uh, Newfoundland Labrador Housing put forth. And again, the purpose of this is to gauge the residential uh, response and whether or not they would be in favor for or against. So I just wanted to uh, to highlight that. And again, as outlined, is uh, March 23rd is the meeting, and of course they can uh, provide uh, commentary, uh, can be received by the planning department uh, no later than 12 noon, March 22nd. So just for clarification purposes. Okay, I understand Newfoundland Housing will also make a presentation at that 
public briefing session on what yes. their vision or their intent uh, was with this. Uh, Councillor Tester, you indicated you wanted to address this matter? I just have one question. Uh, the way this notice of motion reads, it does include more than that one pilot project that was brought to our attention. I'm wondering if uh, New Brown and Labrador Housing would have the authority, if this, if this were to be passed, and again, it's very important to, to stress that no decision has been made on this yet, but if it were to pass, could they, do they have the authority to go in and um, reconfigure these other homes as well without coming to council? Would they have the authority to do that? Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say not, but I'm going to yield to uh, our city planner, Mr. Yepchek. <coughs> uh, Your Worship, you are you are correct. Uh, every application that is beyond uh, a double dwelling in that in, in the, the uh, proposed zone will have to go through a public. Notification process, which would involve uh, a notification on our website, notification in the telegram, and circulation to the area residents. And that is mandatory, that is required. Uh, anything beyond a double dwelling in that area, so anytime you get any application that's beyond that in that area, um, under this proposed zone, the people will be notified. Uh, council will have to go through that public process before we make a decision on the application. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comment? Uh, Councillor Walsh. Walsh. Councillor Walsh. Well, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it's an excellent uh, job, uh, Deputy Mayor, and I think it sums up you know, exactly where we are with this situation. I think there's a lot of misinformation and yes. a lack of information pertaining to that. Uh, I just want to make one slight correction. You, you continuously or several times referenced the, the term affordable housing. Yes. We talk quite a bit in our uh, recent election campaigns about the need for affordable housing This is public subsidized housing, and there's a big difference, uh, a big distinction between that. So, um, and of course, there is a distinction in terms of how subsidized housing operates, even within you know the, the realm of Newton and Labrador housing. Mm -hmm. And we are probably more aware of that than most because we had a presentation and opportunity uh, to ask questions of people from Newton and Labrador housing. But it's an important distinction. I don't want <coughs> people in Pearl to think that this is part. This is really a part of the affordable housing plan Good that point. we're trying to, uh, to initiate in Mount Pearl. This is, this is a request, a specific request uh, from Newfoundland Labrador Housing and is not part of an affordable housing issue that we feel as a council we need to address and we want to address over the next number of years. No, I agree. It's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not part of any adopted strategy right. on affordable housing in the city. This is a pilot project brought to us right. by NLHC that we've said we're prepared to entertain and we'll see how our citizens feel about that. And that's kind of the road we're on. Uh, 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 Councillor Lane. Yeah, just sort of tying into that and, and, um, and to Councillor Walsh's and what you just said, actually. Um, first of all, and I think it's important to make those distinctions, the city of Mount Pearl, or this council, okay, at this point in time, is not really, at, at least I'm speaking uh, for myself, and I think everybody, in terms of the process, this is not about us going to the residents saying this is something we endorse. Correct. That we are, or to use your terminology, because I don't want people to be confused, that we are entertaining, okay? Mm -hmm. Like at this point in time, we're entertaining nothing. We're only entertaining a proposal from Newfoundland and Labrador Housing that they want to do this, and in order for them to do it, zoning would have to be changed. And then part of the process would be to go to this public hearing. Well, yes, because it, impact, it impacts on the live years that are already ab there. Absolutely. So by, going, fair. so by going forward on this process is n in no way to suggest that this is council's proposal. This is Newfoundland Labrador housing's proposal, and we are not really entertaining anything at this point in time until the residents have their say, and then we'll decide whether or not we will agree or disagree with exactly. allowing it to happen when all the facts and adopting when all the, when all, the, when all the facts are yes. in including the opinion of the public that it that it yes. could possibly impact yes. then council will actually sit down and talk about it from the perspective of making some kind of a decision but right now we're in the information gathering mode yes. and and uh, you know unfortunately I do believe councilor Lane and I think you would agree that the way this got interpreted the way the message went out left uh, I think kind of a false impression, mm -hmm. uh, or a mistaken one, certainly, and, and that's unfortunate, but, you know, at least one thing is for sure. We have the attention of residents in the area. We are going to hear from them. Absolutely, and, we are. And NLHC, and by the way, 
needs to hear from them because they, they want to do this pilot project not just here. They want to do this in urban centers right across the province. Absolutely. So hearing how Mount Furlers feel mm -hmm. will give them an idea how people feel in other areas. Absolutely. And uh, I guess the point I just want to emphasize again is that at this point in time, we've agreed to nothing. Right. That's right. We are simply facilitating the process as we would for any, any applicant who wanted to do anything that required any kind of a zoning change. We would go through the same process. The fact that we are allowing it to go through as a proposal does not mean that we are endorsing this in any in any way correct. whatsoever. Correct. Okay. So correct. I think again it's important to emphasize that fact. Yeah. Clarification made. Any other comments from anybody else? Because we're still in the business of rising. <laughs> any other business arising? <laughs> from the meeting of February twenty third. Any other business arising? Anything listed on the action report from that meeting which needs to be addressed? If not, we will uh, simply move along. Uh, correspondence today, we don't have, I don't have any correspondence listed. Nobody wrote us any letters, uh, Mr. Lewis, this week. We got no letters, good, bad, or otherwise. It was all email this week. Uh, first committee report is public works. Councilor Tessier, your floor is yours. Thank you very much. <coughs> Well, community services is lovely. It's just not my committee. <laughs> what are you going to do when we're when we no longer use paper? What are you going to do then? I can't wait till we no longer use paper. Right. I'm really looking forward to that day, actually. <laughs> uh, the first item is a, that, that is a recommendation. Is a recommendation to approve a $100 donation each to Beagle Paws and Heavenly Creatures in recognition of their support in finding homes for unclaimed animals within the city of Mount Pearl. And I so move. Moved by Councillor Tessier, seconded by Councillor Walsh. Question, comment. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion is carried. Uh, tenders were called for the supply and the delivery of pest control services with bids received from the following suppliers that are listed, and we are recommending that the tender be awarded to Cabot Pest Control at the lowest qualified bid as outlined above. And I so move. Moved, seconded by Councillor Walsh. I, I've never heard of Cabot Pest Control. I haven't either, to be honest. Oh, well, yes, been around for a long time. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I've never heard of them before. Okay. And this is inside services. So what are we talking about? What do inside we do with pest control? Inside and outside services as well. So this, this is for had, uh, moist in our buildings. Our buildings? This is for our Public facilities? Buildings. Public facilities, I guess. Or, or is this a contract? Would this be a contract that if somebody in the community complained about well, rodents or how? Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lodge? It's for our own buildings and for public spaces, but not for private residents. Oh, okay. Yes. For our own facilities. In our parks or spaces. something like that. Yes. yes. And this is the rate. Yes. And this is right. standard. This is standard procedure every year. Hmm. Okay. All right. That's well. That's good. A call, call the question. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion is carried. And I have a notice of motion in accordance with Section 39 of the City of Mount Pearl Act 1988 and Council's public notification policy. Take notice that I will. At a regular meeting of council under the authority of section 278 of the city of Mount Pearl Act, bring forward a notice of motion to change item number six in the current snow clearing regulations, which reads, during the period from the first day of December in each year to the 31st day of March in any succeeding year, both days inclusive, no person shall shovel, plow, blow, or cause to be shoveled, plowed, or blown any residue snow from a driveway or parking lot onto any highway within the municipal boundaries of the city. And this will now include onto any highway, carriageway, or sidewalk within the municipal boundaries of the city. Okay, I gather that's gonna be, I can see some questioning over what you're trying to achieve with that, but okay. Does that conclude uh, Public Works? That's it. Uh, thank you, we are moving on to community services. Councilor Walsh. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, as part of the ongoing completion of the synthetic turf uh, soccer facility, Your Worship, we have a tender out uh, for the uh, supply and the installation of uh, bleachers. These are an aluminum uh, bleacher, um, and I believe it accommodates about 3,000 uh, fans, which is fairly impressive. Um, this is a good price, uh, Your Worship, that came in uh, within the tender. In fact, perhaps a, a little below what we may have uh, been expecting, but it's in the range. Uh, and this work will be completed in the early spring, April, May, hopefully for the start of the soccer uh, season. And uh, well, the, I guess the soccer season is 12 months of the year these days, but the, the intensification of this uh, facility use will be certainly April and May. Mm -hmm. So we hope to have it in place for then. 
So we're making a motion uh, to award the contract uh, to the low bidder, Sport Systems Canada, and their installer will be Provincial Fencing and ISO Loop. It is moved by Councillor Walsh, seconded by Councillor Lane. We could take a minute to brag about the turf field. We have an artificial turf field, and our neighbors in the east don't right now. We could brag. We could do that, but we're not into that. <laughs> <laughs> that much. <laughs> that much. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Uh, Contrary minded, motion is carried. Uh, Next Your Worship, the second uh, item is pertaining to the upcoming 2010 Summer Activity Guide. Each of the seasons, as you know, we put out a, a guide so that the uh, various families and uh, residents of our city know what activities are, are ongoing and the, they give uh, notice for registration of, of various uh, sports governing bodies and other activities. Uh, that guide is ready to go and we're seeking uh, Quotation. I think we've used Transcontinental a number of times in the past. The cost is $8,907 plus HST, and as you can see, that's uh, appreciably better than yeah, some of the other uh, prices uh, yeah. that we received quotations on. Yeah. So we're going to uh, move that we go with the, the provider of Transcontinental uh, and uh, ISO Loop. It is moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Lane. Question or comment? All those in favor, contrary minded. Motion is carried. Before I do the next uh, two items, uh, and I'll do them separately because they, they require a separate motion, Your Worship, I just want to uh, remind, uh, I guess, members of council and uh, the public that we actually subsidize the Atrocity Festival. We've already gone uh, through our accolades for that, but I think we do have another upcoming date, though, for the corporate sponsorship. Does anyone remember that? Is that the 22nd? It's around the 22nd. Uh, the 22nd of June, where we actually recognize the various Response. corporate sponsors who so generously uh, support that. But we actually do uh, three things uh, in terms of uh, financially supporting uh, the Frosty mm -hmm. Festival. We do give a grant of $30,000 in cash on behalf of the taxpayers of Montreal. We do provide a $10,000 subsidy, uh, and that's been somewhat more recent, and that's for the use of the glacier because we need the large facility in order to be able to accommodate some of the activities that we have there. Uh, and we also provide, and it's not noted here, but I just want to mention it, we also provide a $5,000 facility use subsidy uh, to the Reef Center because we actually use that quite a bit. And as you know, even if we use it ourselves, the expenses and operating costs of the facility uh, still need to be paid for. So we actually provide the funding for that. It's just we don't put through a motion to pay ourselves. Uh, whereas with the, uh, the, the fourth motion here that we have, the Glacier, we're actually paying the board uh, for the use of that. Mm -hmm. So let me move on to the first motion. We've already uh, paid the first $15,000 of that $30,000 grant <laughs> subsidy. And uh, they're now, of course, completing the payment of their invoices and they're requesting uh, the second $15,000 installment. So we're happy to be able to provide that to them uh, this year. Nice, a nice on move. Thank it you. is moved and seconded by Councillor Lane. Uh, questions, comments? All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. Related to that, Your Worship, uh, also I'm making a motion that we uh, pay the $10,000 subsidy to the board uh, for the use of the glacier for that period of time. And again, uh, with our acknowledgement and thanks, they did a tremendous job again this year breaking up, setting down multiple functions, and they have a very, very quick turnaround. They were particularly under the gun uh, during the, the time that was required when we had the, the snowstorm that first night. Absolutely. Uh, so they had to get that broken down and ready for another function later that evening, and they did a great job, and I'd like to acknowledge that as well. So uh, I'm prepared to make that motion now. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded? Motion's carried. Uh, Your Worship, the 21st Annual Focus on Youth Awards is scheduled for the 12th of May, and that will be taking place as we've done the last couple of years at the Glacier, and it really is a beautiful gala event. It has been, even when it was at the Reed Center for quite a number of years. But the Glacier even provides uh, more space and more opportunity for uh, more extended use, uh, particularly with the entertainment and that sort of thing, and television and audio systems, etc. This year's event will be co-hosted co by Colin Rose and Erica Fitzgerald, who are, as you know, uh, the, the uh, Male and Female Youth of the Year. And for the first time this year, Your Worship, we're going to be incorporating the uh, Sport Alliance Awards into the program. And as part of that, they actually have a new award, uh, which is Official of the Year, and that's for youth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, I think, is, is going to be a nice addition. We used to do them kind of twice, and uh, the Sport Alliance recognized that 
maybe the most appropriate place to have this is partly the focus on youth awards. Uh, the only thing I will mention in addition to that, each year uh, we highlight some of the, uh, the entertainment for the Performing Arts Awards, and they will be, uh, they will be again this year providing the entertainment for the awards, and it's usually top-notch entertainment. And this year we all probably, or many of us got to see The Wizard of Oz, uh, that was put on at the Arts and Culture Center by uh, the O'Donnell High School uh, group, <coughs> and they're going to be performing excerpts from that as well this year. So all in all, it should be a great show. And uh, I just want to remind uh, people, the various groups, organizations, uh, the deadline uh, for submissions is upcoming. I think they extended it to uh, March 12th. So this is really worth submitting nominations for. So if you know candidates, youth who are worthy of nomination, take the few minutes that are necessary to do that because I know they appreciate it. And again, uh, as the next item will indicate, the, the real honor is in taking the time to nominate them and, and to recognize them, and I know they'll appreciate it. Absolutely. So that's just for information. Uh, and the next one as well, Your Worship, is for information purposes. Um, the Citizen of the Year Award will be taking place on Sunday, the 18th of April. Uh, nominations close on the 31st of March, so in just a few weeks' time. And again, I, I want to encourage people, uh, if they, you know, if they know someone who's deserving, whether it's for a, <coughs> you know, a, some individual act of kindness or support that they've, they've done, or whether they're part of a service club or, or an organization, again, take the time to nominate them. Uh, this is done as part of Volunteer Appreciation Week, so it's a, it's a real nice fit, and it's a, a great uh, opportunity for us to acknowledge the many, many people in our city who do such great work. And, uh, Thank you uh, very much. That concludes uh, community you. service. Uh, uh, Councillor Lane? Yep, I'm the citizen of the year. Um, just wondering, Mr. Rosman, um, these applications and these letters uh, that you wrote to say they're community groups, organizations, uh, just wondering exactly who they go out to um, because, uh, you know, while we have a number of service clubs, obviously, that do great work in our city, there are also places like whether it be church whether it be schools that have school councils and, and volunteers and stuff like that that would also be worthy of a nomination. I'm wondering, does it even go to those places uh, or just simply going to all the standard service clubs, board lines, and so on? So I wouldn't want to exclude people on school councils, churches, and so on. I'm wondering if it goes Mr. Osmond can answer that well. question, sure. <coughs> Your Worship, the, uh, the applications and all of the, uh, the letters are sold to Donald to uh, every community organization we have. Churches, schools, the whole gun. So, a couple so of they're on our list. They get that. They get the uh, nomination call. Okay, we've never heard back from anybody that they weren't that they weren't there, have we? No. Right. Uh, Nobody has come to say, "Hey, you missed us." No. Okay. No, I, I if there's somebody out there though who uh, who might feel that they've been missed, they should make contact with uh, with Mr. Osmond. Yeah, I, I just don't recall ever seeing an, an, a nomination coming in, say from a school or something like that. And mm. that's not to say it didn't go. I don't know if it went there. Yeah. It, it always yeah. seems to be your standard, yes. you know, yep. Lions Club or, yep. or Sport Alliance group or something. And I just wanted to make sure it was actually going to all their... Absolutely. We do receive them at the school. You do okay. Them? I was going to say that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Perfect. okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Walsh, Councillor Lane. Thank you for those thoughts. We're going to move on now put you to work. Corporate Services Committee, Councillor Lane. Okay, the report actually outside located on the blue... Oh, are we not doing this one inside? No, we okay. replaced the... Uh, we got a new instead one. Instead of just our invoice for approval, we, we uh, replaced the entire report. Okay. Okay. Yep. So uh, the first one, Your Worship, relates to um, the uh, Federation of Sane Municipalities Annual Conference. Uh, we have a request here for uh, Deputy Mayor Locke to attend. Uh, it's going to be held May the 28th Toronto, mm -hmm. and it falls within our um, professional development training policy, so I so move. It is uh, moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Tessier. All those in favor? Yes. Not to reminded, motion carried. Uh, the next one, Your Worship, is another professional development request. Uh, this time it's coming from um, our CAO, Mr. Lewis here, to attend <coughs> the Canadian Pension and Benefits Institute event. Contribution Pension Plan. There you go. Um, that's being held in Halifax on March the 30th, 2010. And uh, again, it falls within our training and 
development policy. There was money in budget before that every year, so I thought I'd move. It is moved by Councillor Lane, seconded by Councillor Tessier. Uh, the changing pharmaceutical landscape, I understand the evolution of the defined contribution pension plan, which you're going to be looking at, obviously, in your role with TRIO, which is the municipal pension and benefits package and all of that, but Mount Pearl continues to have a defined pension plan for its employees, and there is th this is not the thin edge of a wedge on the part of the city council to try and change the relationship we have with our employees. I think that's, you know, let's make sure everybody understands that. Uh, it's us fellows in the private sector get the defined contribution call. <laughs> I'll call the question. All those in favor? Contrary reminded. Motion is carried. Uh, next item, Your Worship, uh, we have, uh, we're looking, seeking approval of council for uh, three change orders. We listed there, one, one, two, and three. Uh, it's to a tender that was already uh, previously awarded to Canstore in the amount of 18162 plus HST. Mm -hmm. uh, the changes here, uh, there's an additional 382340 plus HST uh, being requested to expand the uh, rolling filing cabinet system uh, length from 10 feet to 12. There's an additional $375 plus HST to cover after our changes due to noise levels. In other words, they were going to install this system during business hours was the plan. And once they uh, get started, we realize it would be too disruptive, so they're going to have to do it after hours, and there's obviously some additional costs related to that. And also there's a 25-24 charge there to add security features and doors on selected filing units, something which we hadn't anticipated uh, from the start. So uh, I am uh, recommending that we approve this change, these change orders, and obviously there's money uh, being approved in the budget for the same. Pleasure move. It is moved and, and seconded. Uh, seconded. This project has virtually doubled in cost. This project doubled in cost. It started out as being a project of eighteen thousand yeah. uh, dollars. Then it went to twenty thousand, and now, if I'm adding this, great, we're adding um, we're adding another six to it. Uh, yes, your worship. It's down from um, eighteen, uh, not doubled, but uh, well, ten thousand dollars in total. The total project now is twenty-eight thousand dollars, and we did originally estimate twenty-five thousand, and we do have funds in, in the budget, but. Okay. Uh, originally it came in on there, but as the new features were added. Okay, yeah, all right. I have no problem with that, and that's yeah. not me being critical. It's just a question that I want to pose to the CAO, and he's going to know what that question is. Uh, how far can we drift off a tender? Uh, you know, this to the tune of 50% before we would have to have gone back to retail. I'm assuming we're safe here. Yeah. Uh, we can drift off without limitation as long as we have prior council approval. We can't drift off at all unless we change the amount, and I can approve under my jurisdiction up to 10,000 bucks to go over that. Uh, if where there is no contingency, then then must have prior council approval. Okay, that's, so your, that's your uh, protection. Okay, so we're on safe ground. All right, anyway, anybody else with a question or comment? I'll call up then. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. Councilor hey, Lane. Uh, next, Your Worship, you have the uh, invoice for approval numbering one to six, totaling $70,415.46, I so move. Moved and seconded. I see, do we have our snowmobile we bought? We got our uh, snowmobile. We're paying for it. I think we already have it. We're paying for it. We now. got our snowmobile. But now the snowmobile, do we have the groomer? Uh, no. We don't have the, the groomer. groomer is being ordered, ordered, so it's it's not ordered. Because yeah. right? this was a big deal for Councillor Lane. He wanted trails groomed. And next year we will have them. Right? Right? It's going to be some fit next winter. You are out <laughs> walking the trails. We have no snow. What? And we have no <laughs> snow this year. <laughs> are you promising snow? No. Are you, you committed to snow, uh, Ray? No, no, no. Any other questions, folks? On, on uh, It has been moved and seconded. Items listed one right through to six. Any other questions? I would be. I would prefer to be endorsing water fountains and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> We're still a winter We're city. Still a winter city so. All those in favor, invoices as presented. All those in favor, yay. Aye. Contrary yes. minded, <coughs> carried. The last item of your work is a request <coughs> for tax consideration. Um, and it's a request to exempt 2010 business taxes in accordance with council's policy for charitable and nonprofit organizations uh, and it relates to the Canadian Diabetes Society. 
Association located at 860 Copper Road and uh, waiving of this business tax um, actually amounts uh, to $1,300.08 waived. And I so move. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded? Motion is carried. And that's everything for you, Councillor Lane. Yes. Sure. Moving on, Engineering Services, Councillor Aker. Thank you, Your Worship. The first item is the uh, Glacier, Glacier Arena Expansion Interior Sales. We have 10 results here, and there was uh, a total of five bids received, and the lowest of the bids was by Management Contracting and Management Limited for seven years, $6,252 plus 8 cents fee, and we're recommending that this tender be awarded uh, to the low bidder in that amount. And I so move. Moved by Councillor Aker, seconded by Councillor Stoyles. Se how much? Seven million? Seven million. Six thousand two hundred and sixty three dollars plus tax. Moved. Oh, we do spend the money. Any question or comment? Is that within is that what we suggest? Oh yes, yep, yep. That that particular piece is Yep. We're we're on target with that, right? With that we're on target with the overall budget, yes. Yep. 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 All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. That's how you spend seven million bucks. Next yeah. item is a routine request from Ms. Lantara for the approval of, uh, of an easement. Basically, this has to do with uh, the purview phase for the uh, subdivision. And basically, in order to get the electrical power and cut across some uh, open space which is owned by the city of Mount Pearl, mm -hmm. and we're requesting that easement, and I so move. Moved and seconded by Councillor Stoyles. All of these dark shaded areas are the easement areas. Is that what we're looking at? All of those, yeah. all, uh, those are all of the easements to what we're asking for. Okay. Question or comment? All those in favor? Contrary minded? Motion is carried. And the first thing your worship has to do with the uh, Commonwealth Avenue Bridge. Uh, there was a contract awarded uh, last year for the refurbishing of the bridge. The subsequent inspections revealed that the, the bridge was really in worse state than the uh, original yeah. product was. The contractor's out there, and basically uh, we've been working with the contractor and we come up with a change order, whereby the contractor um, is proposing uh, to bring this bridge completely up to uh, current standard. It will uh, ensure that the bridge is good for another 10 to 15 years. I think if we proceeded with the original contract, we might have gotten another perhaps five years out of it. And given the all the traffic flow in Commonwealth Avenue, it would be nice not to tie that up by approved dates in the next four or five years. Um, some highlights of the uh, of the change order is basically uh, it will take approximately this is the overall contract approximately approximately four to five weeks. Uh, the contractor is basically ready to go. All the materials have been mobilized, and uh, once asphalt is available in June, it should take no more than four or five weeks of, uh, of work, and the uh, bridge should be done. And it's going to look good. People driving it are going to say, you know, we won't have those big bumps and the metal sticking out of the ground. If you get a look after the work is done, they'll compliment that fence finally. On, on, on how good it all looks. I'm not really going to guarantee how they'll comment during the construction, but ideally that will occur in the... Uh, I, yeah, I can tell you what I'm going to say. <laughs> during ideally construction, you really want to know. <laughs> in June, July, you know, as the vacation season kick off, there'll be less traffic on that road. So that's probably the prime time to be doing this. There will be less traffic on that road. Yeah. Uh, we are going to remind you of this... We're going to remind you of this in June. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Raker, just uh, a question Councilor Lane. Yeah, on that, or, or maybe to Mr. Love, whoever can answer, but just for the public's information, once this gets awarded, how long would we anticipate it lasting? Like, in other words, how long would people be, um, I guess, disrupted, uh, disrupted uh, as a result of this? Four to, five, four to five weeks. Four to five weeks, yeah. Four to five weeks yeah. is basically what the contract is estimating. And I guess that's, a, that's an estimate under perfect conditions. You add a little bit of rain there, and Mr. Lush can perhaps Could be six weeks. This. It might take a few more weeks. Uh, six months. It's not under, uh, I guess it has some consideration for rain. It's not perfect conditions, but four or five weeks under normal conditions of a typical summer is what we would expect for the weekly rain. Um, it is two lanes at a time for four or five weeks, and that's consideration of like a couple days rain. Like if you get weeks and weeks of rain, then no, it would increase it down to six, down to seven. But it's well, you'll be down to one lane in each direction, basically. Yeah, you'll yeah. be down to one lane in each direction. Now, when will we start? Uh, so there's asphalt available, and that's typically June 
asphalt bent the bins again on it. The asphalt plant starts up. It is an asphalt park zone, so we can't do the uh, replace the zone until asphalt. So this won't start till June. Can't start before June because of the nature of the paper going through. So we can have an armor joint replacement with a asphalt park zone. Is that similar to the okay. joint that was installed down in the Duns similar corner yeah. bridge? Very similar. Okay, so that's so, sort of a new technology, is it not? To it's a uh, different type of joint. Is that, that correct? Yeah, it's a different type of joint. It's not an armor joint. That's why you don't get the bump. That's why you don't get the. Uh, uh, and then I guess the joint has been. It's, I guess it's uh, from the bridge department. It's for the problem to stand up right. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's uh, just a recommendation based on information from them. And if you were ever to expand the bridge, you can expand onto that joint. Whereas a typical armor joint, you'd have to weld onto it. You'd have to do a lot of demolition. You'd have to pull the seal out and break the sidewalks. So it would be one thing to expand it to make it one thing, but the maintenance and repair. If Better the technology. Is damaged, you can just replace it instead of having to redo the whole joint. So it should okay. work, should serve well here. Thank you, Mr. Lusk. Yeah. Councilor Tessier. Just a very quick point of note. Uh, when we start this work, we will adequately notify the public to let them know that Commonwealth Avenue Bridge is going to be reduced to one lane each way, and there will be a sidewalk open, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Right. I think one of the issues for us is going to be just because you do put that thought in my head, Councilor Tessier, is about 60 to 70 percent of the traffic mm -hmm. on Commonwealth Avenue is not Mount Pearl. So everybody has to realize that. Right, this big fuss we've had over the east-west and who pays for it and who gets the biggest benefit if the road gets built and all of that. Uh, and everybody says that we get the biggest benefit. Well, actually, other people get the biggest benefit. But it's interesting to note that if we cut this street down to two lanes for four to five weeks, I think our obligation to notify beyond our border becomes very real. And I'm not sure where people are going to go. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not sure where they're going to go <laughs> to get around. Because diverting away from that area is going to be, I think, an issue for folks. I think it really is. But, you know, they're not in the middle of the day, but I just think the rush hour pieces are going to be a problem. But anyway, they're going to need vacation. Yeah. Patience, folks, patience. You've got to make a mess to clean up. We're going to call the question on this change order. All those. Did I make the motion to move this? I thought you did. I'm not sure I did. Well, we had the discussion. Then. We had the discussion. <laughs> so we're going to say you did. All right. Well, I just want to say that the change order is 47200 Okay, Max, Max, maybe you hadn't made the motion. And I so moved. And it is moved. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion is carried. Uh, that concludes uh, engineering. Yes. Sir. We are going to move to public to planning and land use. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the first item here deals with the Mount Pearl Civic Numbering Regulation. Our committee was advised that the City of Mount Pearl Act has been amended, and that provides Council now with the authority to adopt civic number uh, numbering regulations. Prior to this, um, we, uh, we were following civ civic numbering policy and guidelines. So we had some discussions in this. The, uh, just to point out that the regulations in your kit, uh, you received a page outside of it with just some That's what I'm looking at. Some here, edits. Yep. The ones in the, the letter, red lettering is, are, are the edits. Are that the changes. Were, yes, that were changed here. And again, this will give us regulations uh, for commercial and civic numbering residential buildings as well. One of the things that did come up in our discussion um, when we were looking at uh, civic numbering, rather than having a standard size uh, number, because some of the some of the houses, properties are set back further on their, on their property, and um, so that's why we sort of have a sliding regulations depending on how deep the house is away from the road, you know, for um, mm -hmm. um, vision, because we've, I've, I've seen it numerous cases where people are driving down residential streets and they're slowing down because they can't see the number on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. So it becomes, you know, um, a traffic issue and, and a safety issue. So um, all the regulations are outlined there within. So our committee is recommending the adoption of the Mount Pearl Civic Numbering Regulations 2010 and I so move. It is uh, moved and seconded by Councillor Aker. Any question or comment? All those in favor? Contrary minded motion carried. And the second item, Your Worship, is the development permits issued for February the 20th uh, to March the 5th of uh, 2010. Yep. Uh, we have two permits here, uh, one Centennial Street and 48 Bannister Street, and I move that these permits be adopted as presented. Uh, move, moved and seconded a restaurant and second story office and the fitness and wellness center. Mm -hmm. One Centennial, that's the new building, right? Yes. 
a fitness and wellness center going to be? That's very good. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carried. And the last item here, Your Worship, has to do with the building construction uh, the permits, both residential and commercial, for the time period of February the 19th to March 4th, 2010. Uh, residential construction during this time period, total $20,000. And uh, commercial construction during the same time period uh, totaled 54000 bringing the total for this period to 74000 And I move that these amounts be accepted as presented. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. Members of your worship, thank and you. And that concludes that. I, is, do we have anything? We, have economic we do have a report from Economic Development right. Councilor Stoyles. We just have one item, your worship, and it's uh, I guess the committee is recommending that we will proceed with the East West Summer Expo 2010, and we're recommending a tentative will to July 15th raising, and this will be in conjunction this year with city days. And what the committee is recommending today is that during the, the street administration after a sign an MOU between the city of Mount Pearl and Corner Brook uh, for this agreement, and to agree that Fabian Gaines, the event manager, uh, will be not doing the event management for this event, and I shall move. Move by Councillor Second. Stoyle, seconded by the Deputy Mayor, I that we're going to move forward here with the East Meets West, Eats North, I guess it's going to be this mm -hmm. year, Expo this summer, and we're moving it up earlier, right? It's going to tie yeah, it into our City Days. We're going to do it with City Days, and we're looking forward to working together with the City Days Committee. We're going to be meeting actually in the next couple of weeks with the visitors in the area to discuss what our plans are. Last year, City, Day, City Days, of course, happened, and the week after, uh, two weeks after, was the East Meets West. And of course, as you said, Driver Law is going to be part of it this year, but uh, this is the third year of a three year agreement that we had gotten into with uh, Corner Brook, and Driver Law is coming on board this year, so we're looking forward to that. And we, we certainly felt that two weekends back to back in Mount Pearl, and some of the other events and everything. So we're going to try and work them all, work it all together, and have the two events on the same weekend. And hopefully it will work. We're going to be closely monitoring it, and hopefully we'll get the residents out, and it'll be a lot more activities and a busier weekend. So we're looking forward to it. All right. Any other question or comment before we call it? Hearing none. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. And that concludes uh, that. We're up to new business. Last meeting we started on my left. We'll start on our right today. Councillor Aker. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I just want to bring the Council's attention to uh, something from the uh, Mount Pearl Country Association. Um, they are starting an alumni association. Ah, it's a great good. way of connecting the current with the past. And basically, here's what their objective is to allow all players, coaches, and volunteers to remain part of the Mount Pearl Country Association age in the preservation of the history and archives of the NPSA, to assist the NPSA executive with special projects, tournaments, and events, such as the Hall of Fame Scholarship and Archives. And some of the uh, community members who are involved in this committee include uh, Ed Moist, Charlie Jader, Angus Barrett, John, Fro John Croker, Ron O'Neill, Brian O'Keefe, Neil McLeod, Ben Dunn, and Bob Wood. And I might note that most of those guys, all but two, are members of the Mount Pearl Soccer Hall of Fame mm -hmm. and the Mount Pearl Sports Hall of Fame. Two of the uh, gentlemen here I just listed are also a member of the Mount Pearl Soccer Executive. So I want to congratulate the Soccer Association for taking on this initiative. And uh, I'm sure we're all welcome to join as long as you are you know, $10 in your pocket and you're 35 years old, you're welcome. And if you happen to be seeing other people in the community, please pass them up because you know, the Soccer Association is not 100% sure that they've gone out with the message to everybody. Yeah, they don't know, know, they don't know, know how many people they, went they, through they their system. Know, right? So if you bump into people who you knew played soccer or were involved in soccer over the years, just pass it on. First meeting will be on Friday, March 26th, 7 o'clock, at the NPSA uh, Club House in Corner Drive. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. The other thing, too, I'd like to bring up is congratulations to uh, one of Mount Pearl's own uh, a student in grade 12, O'Donnell High School, by the name of Brian Keach, who won the Northwest Rotary uh, Speak Off. Mm. Takes after his father. Takes after his father, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Brian delivered, I'm quoting from the VOCM website now, Brian delivered a lighthearted but complicated speech on a guy's overall dateability. Now that sounds more complicated and lighthearted to me, but I, I can't. I can assure you his data, I can assure you that his personal dateability went up with that win. Probably. <laughs> Speaking of worship, I think it would be appropriate if the city, perhaps under your signature, wrote Mr. Keach, congratulate him, and
And we might even save 50 cents by handing it to Lynn's by his proud mom in the chamber. His proud <laughs> mom, mom, our city, our uh, director of uh, corporate services might bring it home to him, but uh, we will certainly do that. But yes, offer our congratulations. He spoke here at the Youth of the Year. Uh, he also won here. Right, so he's uh, he's done some he's done some marvelous work. He's a budding politician. He's an accomplished Whoa. speaker. He's an accomplished speaker. Yeah. Give him more credit than that you're worth. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll be a maybe he'll maybe he'll be a lawyer. Maybe he'll be a lawyer. Yeah. Right. The last thing, Your Worship, is uh, as you all know, perhaps the town of Grand Falls Windsor is uh, hosting the 2010 Richland and Labrador uh, Commission Games, and Mount Pearl is part of a region that includes Mount Pearl Paradise and all the way down to. I estimate that basically we've got probably anywhere from 50 to 60 uh, athletes from this city joining that team who will be going to the game. So uh, their team color, by the way, is indigo blue, and they're participating in, I think it's upwards of uh, one, two, three, four, five, oh, about a dozen sports ranging from curling to basketball to skating and hockey and, and uh, some others. So uh, I just would like to uh, wish them all the best of luck, and hopefully the future council meeting we can report on their program. And, and, and why did you have to highlight that the uniforms are indigo blue? What, what's the in case uh, you happen to be in Grand Falls, your worship, and you might be. If you see anybody in indigo blue, they belong to us. Is that what you're saying? There you go. Very good. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Councilor Baker, Councilor Walsh. Thank you, your worship. <coughs> well, a week ago uh, today, your worship, we had a meeting of the Regional Water Services Committee, and I know that this is an issue, of course, because of last summer's water ban. It's sort of top of mind of a lot of people. And I guess rightly so, because of their inability to water shrubs and gardens and take care of their plants. And, and our summer is so short that people really like to do that. And we were also concerned uh, last week because the reading that we got at Babel's Big Pond last week um, was just a little in excess of 28.5 uh, feet. And I'm pleased to be able to tell you, as a result of the information I received just today, we've had a lot of rain in the last uh, few days. We and, have. Uh, we are now up to 32 feet, which is an increase of over three feet. That's, good. Um, that's exactly where we were this time last year, uh, exactly. However, uh, this time last year, after this date, uh, this land uh, power took some water from the pond, which has already been taken now. So we're probably three and a half feet, uh, for all intents and purposes, ahead of where we would have been last year. Mm -hmm. uh, a tremendous fall of rain like we had is really, really helpful. We're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination, but certainly that fall over the last uh, few days was extremely helpful and substantially increased water levels at Babel's Big Pond. Uh, I should add as well, I referenced the, the Newfoundland power uh, drain off. Uh, that's something that I've been doing for years. It's, it's, it's uh, part of an agreement that's there, but because of the uh, because of the levels and I guess the threshold of, of additional water supply that we had there. And in anticipation in the next two years of uh, Petty Harbor coming on stream, until at least that happens, we've asked uh, Newfoundland Power now to, to not take any further water from that and to ask their cooperation. We need the water, of course, for, for our own uh, municipal use. Uh, five different communities depend on the Babel's Big Pond supply. So the water is good there. So that's the good news. Water levels are up and uh, we're in reasonably good shape even week over week. So that's good. The bad news is, um, as part of that meeting, one of the major agenda items was uh, to review the costs associated with uh, the dissolved air flotation system, mm -hmm. which we had approved uh, probably a couple of years ago, actually, in principle. Uh, the original costs were, were supposed to come in at about $35 million. They were, uh, those estimates were revised, I think it was a little over $36 million. Right now, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the electrical power supply and power supply units, which is very significant uh, for, a, for an operation like that, they really have to be uh, completely refurbished, to, uh, not just for the sake of the DAS system, but because of the you know the time limits and the usefulness of, of that uh, system. Uh, that is going to increase uh, the cost from about $36 million uh, to approximately $48 million. Good so Lord. it's a substantial increase. Uh, for us, that means uh, we pay for water uh, based on our usage now, but we establish uh, the metered rate as a committee uh, basically to include
include both the operational and the long-term capital costs. So what that means for us is uh, an increase uh, over the next few years for three levels. The rate that we've established this year is 24.2. Uh, next year it'll be 25.25. The year after it'll go to 28.66. And in 2013, it'll be 32.05 uh, uh, for usage. So uh, you can see that that's a substantial increase. What it means in money, that's what people are well, yeah, interested in. Say, give it, 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 give it in, in give money, it uh, time, that huh? means uh, over the life of the three years, that's about a half a million dollar increase uh, for us. And of course, that increase will, will likely uh, continue, uh, not at that same rate. We don't actually know yet what the uh, changes are going to be to the operational costs, and that was made. Uh, it could increase, it might remain the same. Uh, one of the things that the, the dissolved air flotation system does, uh, it treats the water and takes out algae and other things uh, in the water uh, without having to use uh, a backwashing system, which is then used now. And that's really both uh, not energy efficient, very counterproductive in terms of the reuse of water. So it's a really good system. Uh, unfortunately, when Penny Harbor comes on, it won't have a similar uh, system, but it, this is a very good uh, uh, system with the using the, the most modern technology. And, you know, we're all hopeful, obviously, that uh, we're going to get through this year without having to do any more than our regular uh, conservation. conservation order, which is uh, in effect all time. The only other thing I'll mention, uh, we have uh, put in place uh, a technical advisory committee with representatives from all five of the municipalities who serve uh, on this regional committee. Our representative is the manager of engineering services, Lyle Blackmore. Uh, Lyle has been dealing with this uh, Bay Bullsby Pond water supply for quite a number of years and is very, very familiar with it. So we have a lot of, a lot of confidence in that. And uh, we're going to get together <coughs> with a number of user groups and try to put in place a system that will avoid some of the things uh, that we found ourselves in uh, dealing with last year. Um, so that's basically it. As we meet again, and we will be meeting again, in just three weeks' time, uh, which is unusual. We only meet perhaps a couple of times a year. But we're going to be meeting again uh, next month uh, to address this very issue and to, again, monitor more carefully the levels of Bay Bulls Big Pond and be able to update our, our residents and user groups on the status of the water supply. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, pass on to your other colleagues on the regional committee that I think we certainly appreciate that this year everybody is conscious of what happened last year. And we're kind of on top of that. I think everybody appreciates that. I'm, I'm not sure anybody is going to be jumping down, up and down about these uh, continuing escalating costs. It is my understanding that we now have both federal and provincial support on that initiative, right? They are, they are part and parcel of the VAF system. Now, they weren't going to be originally, but uh, they are now. Uh, yes, you are, you're right. So uh, even though we're paying more, we're probably in the end paying less. Well, I think for the ca capital costs, they're in for the capital costs. For the, not for the operation, the capital costs. I think this was part of a very convoluted agreement that involved the east-west arterial and a whole lot of other things. Yeah. So I won't get into the details of that, but uh, yeah, they, they are partnering on that, and that is a, a new uh, initiative. But these are still the real figures, even with their involvement. That's right. We're mm -hmm. going to be paying more. Yeah. That's the reality. Thank you, uh, Councillor so Walsh. So I have a question. Uh, oh, Councillor Lane, a question or a I'm comment? Right. If I can. Um, Councillor Walsh, just wondering, uh, you know, again, for everybody's benefit, the public, um, an issue, as you know, that we had last year and we've, we've, we've had over the years is this whole idea of enough water um, supply. Uh, and obviously people were not happy, as we all know, last year uh, with the water ban situation. Uh, what I'm hearing from you is that the water levels are today where they were last year, uh, but added to the fact that Newfoundland power, the water that they took in the past, has already been or but is gone, is already been taken, and we're still where we were two last year. So that's a good thing. Now, obviously, we can't predict what's going to happen in terms of the weather, how much rain we'll have, or if the rain will just stop and we'll, it'll, we'll have a dry summer and so on. We don't know. But one thing we do know is that last year we had a water ban. People were not happy with that. The price of water is going up. We all know that. We've just been acknowledging we've acknowledged that, obviously, uh, because of these you know, additional costs that it's going to go up. But, you know, you do get from citizens, however, the cost of water continues to go up, but yet, after paying all these additional costs, when I want water, particularly in the summer, I don't have it available to me because you've got a water ban in place. So I'm wondering, in the shorter term, 
what is the committee doing in the shorter term to address that water shortage? So hopefully, if there ends up being a water ban this year, well, next year when Teddy Harbor is on uh, is on stream, I'm assuming it's next year. Then can we look forward. Okay. So at that point in time, can we look forward to no more water bans? And 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 that being the case, and for how long? Or are they looking at additional water supplies, i.e. Thomas's pond, as an example? Are they even looking to the future to say, at some point in time, we're going to have to bring on even more water if we don't want water bans? Is that something that's being addressed by the committee? Uh, well, I wish we could say with certainty that we will not, regardless, uh, won't need any more water bans. That I don't think anybody would be in a position to say that. But what we are doing is trying to do as much as we can uh, in both the shorter term and the long term uh, to address some of the concerns that you mentioned. In the shorter term, uh, within the next two years, Teddy Harbor will be on stream, and that provides about a third of the water supply approximately that is provided through uh, Babel's Big Pond. Uh, just very rough figures. It's a, as I said, the quality of water may not be exactly uh, the same as it is from Babel's Big Pond because they've spent a lot of money on upgrades to that facility uh, through various creeks and improvements and that sort of thing. Um, in addition to that, I already referenced the fact that we've, for the first time, uh, my association with the Regional Water Committee, and I go back eight years, uh, we've actually addressed the issue with the water being taken by the Glens Tower. We're asking that because of the volatility of the water supply and you know the fairly low threshold that they not take water, uh, particularly at, you know at this time of the year heading into the summer season. So they're two fairly proactive uh, things, um, and you know we really only have two two summers to get through before Petty Harbor comes on. Now Petty Harbor itself provides a fairly significant water supply, but I guess what we have to do is address how the water distribution system may change when wa uh, Petty Harbor comes on. And I'm referring to, you know, <coughs> will all of that water be allocated uh, to, uh, for example, the users of Babel Big Pond, or will St. John's redistribute some of the water supply from Windsor Lake and utilize some of uh, Petty Harbor? There are issues that we need to, to, to address. The other thing, um, there has been quite a bit of talk uh, in the last uh, couple of years about uh, you know, uh, eliminating the ban on development <coughs> above the 190 contour. For now, at least, because of uh, the current water situation, uh, that has been put on hold. So that's also uh, sure. you know, a very positive uh, move. So we're doing three or four things in the shorter term to address it. The longer term question, uh, you know, the next uh, supply, water supply, is Thomas's bond that's been identified. That, that cost would be literally in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to put on, but one of the things we're doing through the technical committee that I just referenced is we're going to be establishing the technical committee. They're going to work as a group to provide answers and information about those kinds of things uh, so that we can get perhaps a, a little better handle on whether we need to expedite uh, you know, the, the, uh, the bringing on of an additional water supply or at least get a more reasonable and accurate assessment of where we stand. If we need to do it, uh, you know, that doesn't happen overnight. That's going to be certainly a good 10-year uh, plan. But it, it, it would be perhaps appropriate and positive that we at least look at it. I will tell you, though, there doesn't appear on the surface to be any urgency to move that longer-term plan forward. But we ask the question. And uh, the technical committee will be charged with the responsibility of, of looking at that and to see whether or not we have to make changes to it. Okay. So they're very, very valid points. Okay, thank you. Sir, your worship, if I could. Uh, a comment, yep, go ahead. First thing, I'm delighted Mayor. to hear uh, Newfoundland Power um, with respect to the, your, your taking of the water because um, I discovered that during, during our election campaign uh, when a resident brought it to my attention. I had no idea that that was happening. I don't know how widespread that, that information is. So it's nice to know that Newfoundland Power is, you know, considering, you know, the present circumstances and, and the like. Also, just to um, reiterate or emphasize one of Councillor Walsh's points about, um, yes, we're up to 32 feet, but uh, we still got to, uh, I think, communicate the message that um, we can conserve water. You know, it's amazing when you look at the amount of water that, that we consume as a city and as a region. Uh, so just because we're up from 28 and a half feet to, you know, 32 feet and we're, uh, w you know, we're in good shape relative to last year, Again, I don't want the message to get out there that people can sort of um, go back to old habits and old ways. So you know, we still gotta we still gotta conserve and uh, and protect this precious resource that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Water conservation has to become a way of life, not a, a thing we do from time to time. Uh, can we move on to another subject? Are you finished, I Councillor am, Wallace? Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to get through. Uh, uh, Councillor Lane. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't want to constitute a debate on no, this. No, no, it's not, it's not a debate. It's another question for Councillor Wallace, one that I didn't I forgot to ask. And I'm only asking, and I think I know some of the answers, but for the public benefit, okay? Councillor Wallace, I'm just wondering uh, this whole concept that, that, that the Deputy Mayor just raised about water conservation and so on, is the committee also going to be looking into some of those things in terms of? development regulations for new developments and so on and things like you know low flush toilets and gray water question systems and all that is going to be I might understand I, I think that you mentioned um, last week something about that that we'd be looking at adopting those types of regulations throughout the region so to get water usage down is that well, it also is. going to be part of it? It is and I agree with all of you in saying that and I, I'm, I'm glad that you uh, Deputy Mayor mentioned that uh, you know we have to continually to uh, conserve water and it has to be part of, of what we do uh, not even just in the summertime all the time right. because uh, we don't have uh, you know an endless su supply of water uh, the terms of reference of the Texas committee will be uh, will be developed as part of their first meeting I would imagine but we've already addressed every one of the things that you've mentioned that you've mentioned I mean are there things that we can do uh, the landscape association for example are meeting uh, with the technical committee and they're perhaps one of the major user groups of, uh, of the water supply and they have been taking for example you know treated uh, potable water and using it in the landscape when you know that's really entirely unnecessary so they're going to be asked to buy in and do things differently on a routine basis not because there's a water man only uh, you know just the fact that we find ourselves talking about this so seriously in March last year June 22nd uh, we were convened to a meeting and told that we are, you know our water supply is in is in jeopardy here, and we have to take some some uh, affirmative action in the form of a water ban. So you know we are doing a lot better. We don't want to repeat the mistakes, and we do have things in place to address some of those concerns. Good. Councillor Stoyles. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> I uh, just wanted to inform Council that I attended the beer program to all the youth for this week's uh, education, and all the six students in Providence actually does this ten week program. And of course, I was privileged to be up at St. Peter's Elementary uh, on Monday last week when over 80 students at St. Peter's completed the program and want to say what a great program it is. And of course, they want to pass on thank you to the city because we are one of the sponsors of that program. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great to see us supporting programs like this, helping our young people, especially when we talk about all the, the drugs in our school system and the drugs within the province and of course we hear on the news about all the drug busts and everything happening so it's great to see the schools and the RMC doing something about this. The other thing I wanted to mention your worship was uh, this past weekend uh, it was great that we didn't have to go through but an awful lot of our colleagues in, at, on the Avalon had a power outage mm -hmm. and right on the Avalon Peninsula from Baby's Road to Bonavista uh, there was thousands of people and still there's still about six or seven hundred I understand without electricity and uh, it's been a really rough weekend for a lot of the municipalities looking for generators and that and I know I've received a number of calls as Avalon director trying to help out some communities that have had an awful lot of problems over the past weekend they've gone up to five days without power some of them have the water you know pipes have frozen and things like that so they've gone through a lot and I don't know if there's anything else we can do to help at this stage of the game. I know, I don't know if, if you know, I think some of the problems now with Newfoundland Power have definitely helped a lot of the communities. But in the future, when there's a major out, you know, outburst like this and a major crisis, maybe it's something that the larger communities can do without. And I know we have generators, you know, we do have some in our, in our center, but especially when there's a crisis like this, maybe it's something we need to look at for the whole of the Avalon or the whole for the, for the whole province because this certainly was not a lot of our seniors in schools and in halls and community centers and that all around the Avalon this weekend and uh, you know I know most of us saw it on the news but a lot of us have dealt with it firsthand mm -hmm. and it certainly has been a tough weekend for a lot of those people. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, two items, Your Worship. First of all, uh, sort of on a sad note, 
Um, you may have seen in the paper the weekend that we the passing of uh, Michael Dinn, mm -hmm. a 35 year old. He was a, a referee uh, in the system. He, I'm involved with the, the junior hockey system. Uh, he was a ref for 20 years and he succumbed to his, uh, his battle with cancer. So I just wanted to extend condolences to his wife and young child and of course his family and friends. And the second item here is a good news story. Um, uh, one of the uh, youth of Mount Pearl, Amanda Kretchen, um, she's a dancer. You may have seen her in the, during the Frosty Festival at the um, Lip Sync. One of the dance teams got up and did this, this great routine. Um, Amanda uh, applied for or auditioned for So You Think You Can Dance, the, America, uh, the Canadian edition, mm -hmm. and uh, speaking to her mother the weekend, and she made it right to the last round. Um, she didn't get through to the final round, unfortunately, but um, they, um, they're going to do a, they flew down here, I think, Monday, yesterday, to, to interview her because she was the only uh, finalist from Newfoundland Labrador. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, if you would, I'd like to send a letter of congratulations to Amanda, a uh, phenomenal dancer. She's a university student, uh, completing her Bachelor of Commerce degree, but her passion is to, to dance, and one day she's hoping to start a, a dance team. So I just wanted to, Wonderful. again, acknowledge Amanda Kretchen. Gladly. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad to do that. Uh, Councillor Lane. Mr. Worship, a couple of things. Um, first one, Worship, this is something I had raised uh, a while back. Um, and I think it kind of somewhat died on the vine because I think of the changes of the tournaments and so on. Uh, but uh, that was beautification, uh, some beautification initiatives in Park Avenue. I know it was an issue that certainly came up in the last municipal election. I know it's something that near and dear to uh, Deputy Mayor Locke's heart because he's certainly made representation on this as well mm -hmm. about some things we can do in the older sections of Mount Pearl to try to beautify it because there is a sense with some people in, 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 in the Park Avenue, Jersey Avenue area that, you know, uh, we have these beautiful parks at Towers Pond and Branscombe Pond and so on, but there's not a whole lot of attention being paid to, to that area, some of the original areas. Um, so I would like to, I guess now it would go to Mr. Lodge. I did have sort of a conversation with uh, Gerard Philpott, who, uh, who was involved when I brought it forward in the past and had looked at some spots along Park Avenue. As he still example. would be. He still would be. Yeah. And so I did have a conversation with him. He said he did identify some spots where there were some things we could do. And I think he said, you know, there may be some, there was some money budgeted and so on. They may be able to do some things this year. But what really needs to happen is that sort of needs to be formalized, I think, perhaps through the Public Works Committee to come back to council with some sort of a more formalized plan of exactly where these locations are and some ideas of what could be done to beautify those particular spots. And then we could, with along with some costing, and then as a council we could possibly approve those and, and what can't be done this year, maybe budget over the next couple of years to sort of spruce up some of the different areas along Park Avenue. Spruce up Park Avenue. Spruce up, go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, like, for example, the entranceway coming in off Dunn's Road, I think he said there may be an opportunity to do something there. Both entrances to the Newfoundland Trailway, uh, maybe in front of Park Place and maybe in front of the uh, street going to the swimming pool. Some of those spots we may be able to, you know, put some planters and trees and whatever there. Now give it all a given Given nice that put Park it. Avenue is about to be the most beautiful street in our city, it might be nice to do some of that. Yeah, it yeah. would, right? Put a couple of benches mm -hmm. around and stuff. We have a senior's home there and so on. So mm -hmm. put some benches out and so on. So I'll refer that to this committee now to sort of bring back something to council in terms of, and like I said, Gerard is well aware of it and, and so on. The other thing I wanted to bring forward, I'm not going to read all this, by the way. No, please. <laughs> please. But uh, this was something I researched, actually. Uh, Net, and this was something I had mentioned in the past as well, uh, but it ties into an organization. The World Health Organization mm -hmm. has a program, and it's called, um, it's the World Health Organization Global Network of Age-Friendly Cities. Mm -hmm. And it's a program which they have where different municipalities, different cities throughout the world, mm -hmm. and there's a number of them in North America, including Halifax and so on, would basically sign on to this program, and I have an application form here and a guide and everything, okay? And there's no cost to the city, but basically what it does is when you sign on, you make a commitment that, that to look at uh, the things that we're doing in our community and how they relate to senior citizens.
citizens. From a planning perspective, it could be from when we're putting off different events, how do we ensure at the top of mind that we're putting off community events that seniors and, and, and that could access those events. If we're going to be doing sidewalks and so on, uh, or trailways, allowing for them to be wide so if someone had a wheelchair, they could utilize the trails. Um, to look at, even when we put out our tax bills, to make sure the font is larger so, so people who can't see it well can, can see it better. And, and there's a whole load of initiatives that fall into seven different categories. So to sign on basically would mean that we would be part of this organization, would be no financial cost, but basically there would be a commitment to get involved, and, and once you're a part of this network, then you get sent regular information and, and uh, you can get best practices from other cities all around the world of things they're doing to enhance their community from a senior's point of view. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing this, you're supposed to engage the senior community through this process, and we're lucky we have the seniors independent group already set up and established in Mount Pearl, and I think it would be a great fit to get them involved in this, and to be honest with you, looking at the criteria, I think that we would already be considered a, uh, a senior friendly city already uh, without having to do anything, but that's not to say there aren't improvements we could make, and by doing this and getting involved, it's so I'm going to forward this, I guess, to Mr. Rosman to introduce community services initiative, I think, and perhaps, again, go through the committee and see if this is something that we may want to sign up for. Mm -hmm. I think okay. it's a great initiative. Good. We'll Thank wait you. for a rec we'll, we'll wait to hear a recommendation from community services. Councillor Tess here. Just a couple of brief things. Actually, to touch on that age for <coughs> cities thing, uh, the Deputy Mayor and I at the last FCM attended a session on age-friendly communities, and they talked about not just the physical elements of making your community more age friendly, it also talked about how to incorporate your community together, how to introduce the youth to the seniors, get them down to show them you know, computer tricks and, and things like that. So it was pretty neat. And uh, so I think, it, I think it's an excellent initiative. Uh, I guess this is a compliment to uh, Mr. Lush, our new director of public works and infrastructure. We recently, uh, I received myself personally a couple of emails about the intersection of Grainville and Wyatt and some traffic concerns that people had there. The traffic calmer has been placed there and I actually received two emails saying, thank you so much, we see a difference. So uh, thank you very much for addressing that and I hope that that makes a big difference to that intersection. And I guess to Councillor Soil, she gave a shout out to St. Peter's uh, Elementary, so I gotta give a shout out to Newtown Elementary. I was there last week as well for their, their, their graduation. And you could tell when the uh, children, they, they pick speakers, they all have to write a speech about the DARE grad or about the DARE program and what it means to them. And when they were presenting, you could tell the kids actually got it, like they understood what they were talking about, mm -hmm. which was really imperative. And hopefully they carry that message with them and, and that promise to themselves uh, right up through uh, the rest of their school year. So it is, it's an excellent program. We should be really proud to support that. And, and I, think, I think it's fair to say we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, that having been said, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Aker that we adjourn. We uh, stand adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.